Hello, I'm Doug, stand-up physicist. This is the second in a video blog series, Playing with Physics, Research Through Outreach. And the title of this video is Believe in the T-Shirt. It is my belief that this particular T-Shirt contains the next big few steps in fundamental physics. And fundamental physics is about things like gravity, electricity, the weak force, and the strong force. So I'm going to now go mobile, just like in that uh, Born Ultimatum movie. All right, so here, so now you can see it up close. Okay, so <clears throat> if I can get my mic in place. All right, here we go. <laughs> okay, so we are claiming to deal with classical physics, fast physics or relativistic physics, uh, gravity, and finally, light plus. So that would be the weak force and possibly the strong force, but that's quite a bit of a stretch. So now let's look at these one at a time. So let us deal first with classical physics. All right, great. Right there in gray. And we see absolute space and absolute time. And they just don't mix with each other like at all. And this is actually an accurate thing to do when your speeds are really quite low. But in 1905, Einstein developed special relativity the physics of going fast. And now there is a speed limit. It's in that X sort of thing, the 45 degree lines. That is where light goes. If you have a mass, you can never go that fast. And these two graphs up here, these are really old school. And in fact, they're so old, <laughs> they're not considered at all interesting. Uh, I mean, we see this, this thing where we're driving, drawing zero in black and unity in gray. Okay. And really the whole thing, these are just different kinds of graphs and there's nothing that interesting about them. Oh, there is something unbelievable and that it would be the labels. Okay. So that's what's radical is claiming this is, has, this has anything whatsoever to do with gravity or this thing is, has anything to do with light or anything else. So um, let's just think about this green graph down here. Because the green graph basically is the classical graph, but where we respect the speed of light. So that's why we got the whole bendy thing going on. Or we could think of the green graph as this graph just rotated by 45 degrees. And then we'd have, oh, we'd have a cross and we'd have those hyperbole. So these look entirely related. Now, in special relativity, if you've got two inertial observers, they can be at different spots on the gray line. And the different spots would just mean that they're going at different speeds. Nothing more or less than that. So what does it mean if you were in different spots on one of these gray lines? Well, the first thing it would mean is that you're dealing with a non-inertial observer because the inertial observers are covered by this guy. So these guys are not like that. <laughs> They're non-inertial, which is kind of cool. But what can we know experimentally about non-inertial observers? Well, we know that if you um, go up, if you're in a gravity field and you go up to different heights in that gravity field, well, then things are going to change. So let's imagine a balloon girl, somebody who's floating high up in the sky. She is going to be feeling, feeling nice because she's not under the stress of gravity. Her heart's going to be faster. Her meter stick is going to expand. It's going to be bigger. Now, if she measures two events, the distance and the space between those two events and compares it to somebody who's just on the ground, a referee or, or, or a reference observer, 
then she'll think that the time between the two events is larger because her heart's beating really fast. But the, the distance between them is smaller because she's got a huge meter stick. All right, but what about a guy who was in a mine shaft? Well, his heart's going to beat slower and his meter stick is going to be compressed and smaller. So when he compares his results to the referee or, or to the balloon girl, he's going to think that the t there's going to be less time with his slow beating heart, but the distances are going to be larger. So my proposal for gravity is that these effects are not merely kind of opposite each other, but they are exact inverses. So gravity is now becomes the imaginary twin of special relativity. And both involve the same squared quaternion value. Now Newton's theory of gravity and Einstein's general relativity are both field theories. They're mediated by particles. Now special relativity is a set of rules that applies to everything. No exceptions. Quaternion gravity, kind of as its rotated proposal, also is going to be a very similar set of rules that applies to everything. No exceptions. But here's the thing. There's not going to be, um, there's not going to be a particle needed. There's not going to be a quantum gravity theory and well, I've seen the reaction to this proposal <laughs> and it's actually a b boredom, okay? Because, you know, professional physicists, they don't have to say no to this, all right? Um, I mean, I'm not a pro. Uh, it looks too simple. It's not a field theory. So, you know, it's kind of safe to ignore. Now, I can't ignore it because I own this t-shirt, okay? I know how easy it is to go, go from here to here. Respect the speed of light to go from here to here. It's rotating. Now, these are totally standards. This has to be something that nature respects. And the only thing I can think of that ex connects directly to experiments that, that have been done and confirmed is being at a different height in a gravity field. But it's really this, uh, this, this graph in pink over here that's, that's the most radical. Um, so now, oh, oh, for zero, we only got one place for it. <laughs> it's at that center. And uh, then we get a, uh, a circle around it. I mean, okay, now, in, in standard physics, it turns out that events in space-time have, like, no power. The, the action is all in the covariant or contravariant tangent spaces, whatever the heck that means. <laughs> um, but I like to treat events like numbers, okay? And that can be added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided. And the circle there is formally the symmetry group U1, the unit circle in a complex plane. Uh, now, I've got dr, which is kind of x, y, and z all kind of grouped together, but if I kind of let them be their own selves, then this would be the symmetry group SU2. But let me guess, you don't care about symmetry groups. <laughs> well, I, I can understand that. I can understand that. Um, well, it turns out that U, the U1 symmetry is directly related to electric charge conservation. Uh, and so that's directly related to how light works. And SU2 symmetry is about weak charge conservation. And so that is going to be what the weak force is about. Now, the strong force is another symmetry group. It's SU3. And the quaternion group QA is never going to be SU3. And so I think it will take a considerable effort by someone way smarter than me uh, to build a bridge if there is a bridge to build. So what do we have for this t-shirt? Okay, let's see. We've got linear quaternions, which would be the classical kind of figure uh, stuff. You've got 
the squares both here and here, but this is the real value of the square, and this is the imaginary value of the square uh, of a quaternion. And this is about the norm of a quaternion. I mean, that's all the that's all the math we've got here: <laughs> linear squares, norms. And yet, we've got a way to relate those things to fundamental physics, classical physics, special relativity, gravity, the weak uh, uh, EM, and the weak force, and. Believe me, we haven't gotten to the strong force yet, but <laughs> that's, that, that's speculation. So, um, and, and one other thing. I mean, I think this t-shirt looks pretty good. I mean, we've got some fun colors, simple lines. Um, so, I believe in the t-shirt, and I hope you will believe in it someday, too. Thank you very much.